Hackney. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business, sidestep all the crazy things that I seem to step on. Happy Thursday. It's great to have you. Today is the 9th of July. The 9th of July. That is wild. And I have a doozy for you to talk uh, to talk to you about today, which is how to charge for voiceover work. I'm excited to talk to you about this because we uh, I did a video last week about voiceover rates on Fiverr, for example, and you know that got a lot of great attention and a lot of um, people reaching out to me and you know asking me more questions. And I think it's just uh, you know brought to the forefront of my mind again the importance of understanding how to charge for voiceover work and what that actually looks like. And, and what should you follow and where should you go to find out that information and should you even um, listen to what someone over here says or someone over there says and and how do you just do it in general so we're going to dive into that today we're going to discuss all of that again I want to thank you for showing up if you have a moment before we get started please click the uh, subscribe button hit the bell notification if you uh, would like so that you can get notified when I go live and uh, you know, it, it will be um, a lot easier to know my craziness. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, I want to welcome everybody from Twitter and YouTube and Facebook. It's great to have you. This topic of pricing is always on the forefront of our minds because, I mean, let's be honest, I mean, that is... Uh, uh, so important on multiple levels, not only on how we make our money, but also how, uh, you know, we are perceived, right? Like, how are we perceived by the rest of the voiceover community? Also, you know, it is a marketing tool, right? Pricing is definitely a marketing tool. Um, there are all sorts of things that pricing has to do with. And, you know, for today's discussion, I want to present to you some of my own ideas and thoughts about, you know, pricing and how this can help out. Uh, I would like to note, I'm seeing some, uh, let's see, making sure that everybody is actually able to see me. Okay, cool. So anyways, let's dive into, you know, if you're just starting out or you've been in the business for a while and you're trying to wrap your head around pricing or here's another example of why this could be important to you because, you know, let's say that you're working hard and you're, you're, you're doing voiceover work and you feel like you're busting your chops, but, you know, the pricing that you have currently, you're really not making a great deal of money, yet you're working super hard. You're getting work, but you're not making the money that you hope that you should be making. This all goes back to what I'm going to talk about today. The first line of defense when we're thinking about pricing, okay, is we go out and we search for ways or for what other people are doing. And we will inevitably come upon the voiceover rate guides. Um, there is the, you know, in our country or in the United States, there's the Global Voice Academy, uh, and acting, uh, voice, uh, Global Voice Acting Academy. I think that's what it is. Um, I could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. And anyways, they have a rate guide that's pretty popular. If you're in the UK, uh, or so, you know, you've got the gravy for the brain rate guide. Uh, and of course, there are a couple others, but you know, and then I created a rate guide within the last, I don't know, I guess three to four months. Uh, you know, presenting a different model of rates uh, for for people to look at as well. But that's the first thing that you do, right? You go and you look at these rate guides, and then from them, you have to make a decision about, you know, how much do I charge? Now, something that's interesting that, that I, I get a lot of people who come to me and say, hey, you know, I, I'm using the, the uh, GVAA rate guide, but for whatever reason, I quote this to people, and they come back and tell me I don't ever pay that rate. I don't ever do that. So I don't understand those rate guides. They're not working to me. You know, what's going on? And, you know, of course, I will, you know, tell those people to go check out my rate guide on a VO's journey because it's a different pricing structure than those. This is why I set it up. But, you know, that is one look at rates, but there's there's other ways to look at it. So another way to look at it, right, is if you go on to website, are you going into Facebook groups and you know you start asking or you start um, the the not so fun way to find out rates is when you 
post something like you're doing something for a price and then you either get bashed <laughs> for charging that price or being on a platform, you know, you're kind of conditioned. Right, you're conditioned to think because none of us like to be bashed that maybe that price is wrong. Maybe I need a price, you know, charge more, and then inevitably someone will come on and give you the theory that they have about you know how pricing is, uh, you know, what pricing you should be charging, and et cetera, et cetera. So there's that way. But I want to, uh, and then there are the other another way is. Uh, websites, right? A lot of websites have determined that they're going to actually charge uh, a, a price that they've come up with, their own rate guide, so that you don't even have to, you know, that you're taken out of the mix and the client's taken out of the mix. You know, like certain pay-to-play sites, for example, do that. Uh, like um, the uh, Voice Realm, all right? It's a UK-based business, but, you know, I, I do business on that. And, you know, they have a specific rate, which some people like, some people do not like. <laughs> but their rate guide, uh, Voice Jungle, they have specific flat rates. There's places that have, like, specific flat rates that they charge, a voice bunny hat, like they're all these rates are out of our control. Okay, uh, places like Voices.com, they allow you to charge what you want, but at the same time, or the customer, the, the client's willing to pay. But they also kind of have a rate guide, but it's not really focused on. But um, so that that's another way to do it. Today, though, I I, I want to focus on another method of helping you figure out what rates to charge. And in my opinion, this should be, in my mind, this should be, in the end, what all of us use no matter what. And we should all be charging, you know, in my humble opinion, uh, based on our needs, our own needs. Like, on your needs. You should be charging on your needs, okay? Okay. Um, and what I mean by that is, right, is when you when you run a business, we have expenses. Our time, our equipment, our costs for uh, electricity, space, you know, I mean, if you're at home and you're already paying for your space, that's one thing, right? But, you know, the reality is, is that you could technically and you should, you know, take your business as a business as if you are renting that space. And, and you want to put together a list of the actual costs of your business, okay? Now, again, whether your biz whether this makes sense to you, like, for example, I'm in a room, OK, and I'm, you know, using this room in my house as my office, my studio, my editing station, all of my stuff. This is where I conduct business. Honestly, when in my previous home, it was a sliver of a room and my my newer home, it's it's an entire room that's dedicated to just my business. So this space, if it's, you know, maybe it's like. 10 feet by 15 feet or something, right? Uh, that space would be, you know, completely, you know, marked off for business use. So then I could take how much I pay for my house, take that space and actually determine how much it costs per month for me to rent this space. Then there's electricity usage, OK, now, again, you know, figuring this stuff out again, you can do it by square feet and et cetera. You can, you know, kind of um, guesstimate, if you will, on some of these. But the reality is, is that you want to also put down your time. Like how much do you feel you should actually be charged or, or you should charge someone for your time? This is to me, this is important. I'll never forget this when I first started out. Uh, I, you know, in voiceover, like many of us, I had no idea where to go to look for anything. I didn't know what to charge. I didn't know any of that stuff. And so, you know, um, as many of us men do, what do we do? We ask our wives. <laughs> and I asked my wife and uh, the brilliant woman she was told me um, or is, she's not what she is. Uh, you know, she was like, hey, you know, well, how much do you want to be, you know, how much do you want to be paid an hour? And, you know, if I look back and I think about that, you know, the brilliance of that compared to what so many of us do now is, you know, it's thinking about us individually, you and you running your business. You know, how much is it that you want to make? All right. And realistically, you know, if you come in and say, well, I want to be paid a thousand dollars an hour. That's awesome. 
Okay, and if someone pays you $1,000 an hour, great. Okay, but you know, there's also some realistic things here. Uh, I see a lot of people say, you know, someone offered me, you know, uh, $50 or someone offered me $100 for a minute. I'll never accept that a minute audio. I'll never accept that rate. That's so cheap. You know, and I understand that position. But at the same time, I think to myself, you know, imagine if you were running a business and somebody came up to you and said, you're going to pay me $100 an hour, right? And you're like a one, to, you're like a, 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 a mom and pop shop or you're a one person business, which a lot of businesses we deal with now are one person businesses, right? Or two or three people businesses, right? Because we're, we're open to the world. And, you know, you're like, well, minimum wage is like eight or nine to however much minimum wage is right now. You know, uh, I, it's under ten dollars. But even let's just say it's ten dollars. You know, you say, you know, well, I'm only going to pay you ten dollars an hour. Right. I mean, if you if you think about how much people are paying for labor, I'm not saying that means we should be paid ten dollars an hour. What I'm saying is, is that it's understandable how some people who are not in our industry and don't understand how difficult it is and the craft that we have to master that could say, wait a minute, I don't understand why you're charging so much. The point I'm trying to make there, all the point I was trying to make there is just, you know, be understanding to why people ask or why people are uh, confused about why some people are confused about why it costs so much for voiceover. But going back to this idea of you figuring out how much you want to be, you know, how much you want to charge someone is important because you might say, okay, well, the job I'm at now, I make $25 an hour, okay, or I make $15 an hour, or I make $50 an hour, okay, these are, these are rates that you make that are out there in the world. It's not voiceover rates, but it's a general rate that you may be making in your current job. So you think about most of us, like me, I wanted to replace my job, my full-time job with doing voiceover full-time. So I had to look at it, well, what do I need to do to replace my work, okay? My, my money as opposed to making you know a fortune in voiceover. Um, and, you know, when I stopped and looked at that, I actually started looking at, okay, well, how much money do I actually make an hour? Plus, how many, how much of my expenses do I have? Okay. And then when it comes to work, how much then do I need to charge for a job? Because you think about a lot of the work we do can be an hour's worth of work, or it can be, you know, 15 minutes of work, or it could be three hours of work, right? Like if you're doing an audiobook. Okay. So when you when you take all that into consideration. You start to think, okay, well, there's a price here that has nothing to do with rate guides, that has nothing to do with anything else. It has to do with your own self-reliance, your own uh, needs, and then you factor in what you want your business to make. You need to factor in where you are currently, right, how you're starting, and no wonder why so many people – Right? That's a lot of stuff. No wonder why so many people go to rate guides because it's easier to look at a rate guide that someone else created than for us to double down. And, and because a lot of this stuff is, you know, intangible, right? Like, you know, what is our business technically worth right now? Like the name of our business, not us. You know, my if you don't know my opinion about what are like saying, what am I worth? I don't believe there's any price tag on any of us. I think all of us are. Uh, you, you can't put a price tag. We're so valuable. You know, every individual is is beyond value. I mean, it's you, you, it's incalculable to me. So p- putting money on someone and saying I'm worth more doesn't like that. That is out of my mindset. What's in my mindset though is the reliability, the trust, the acknowledgement, the awareness of your business. Okay, Uh, and that can be a lot more tangible that can you know what I mean? Like the reach of your business, how many how many people, how many eyeballs does your business reach? That's important. Right. Or your name, your brand name. Does that make sense? So that can be looked at as a way of saying, okay, well, right now I'm just starting out. No one even knows I exist. 
you know, in this industry. You know, I'm in some um, groups, you know, and but no, no one knows, like, because I'm not getting any business, no one even knows I'm offering my services. So how do I go about pricing based on that and based on how much money I work? Let's say you make $20 an hour, and I'm just using round numbers. You make $20 an hour, you determine that every month it costs you, maybe it costs you, you know, $300, you know, with expenses to run your business. Maybe five, we'll use $500, all right? And you say you work a 40-hour work week, all right? So 40, 80, 160. Again, I apologize if my math goes awry. 160 times $20 an hour, well, we know. So that's probably going to be, what, 160 times 20 is 32. So what is that, $3,200 a month? Okay, so I think that's right. So it's thirty two hundred dollars a month, and if you're making thirty two hundred dollars a month before taxes, and we've determined that it's costing you roughly five hundred dollars a month to run your business, and that now we know that if it's twenty dollars, how many hours are you going to actually put into it? Let's say you determine, well, I can put in three hours a day, five days a week. That's fifteen hours. Okay, now if your head is hurting right now because it's math, I understand. But this math is important. It's not something that we should overlook. Okay, because this really is how I believe we should charge. Yes, it is, it's a good idea. And I value this. I really do paying attention to the people that have come before us, the hard work they've put in to build uh, this business to a place where we all can enjoy the benefits of that hard work that they've put in. I agree. But at the same time, those people who put in that hard work, you know, they they built a businesses based on what they needed as well. So we need to be able to respect that. But we also, again, need to respect the fact that we are doing this to pay to feed our families. We're doing this to pay our bills so that we can have a roof over our head. So there is a need here, I think, for us to, to concentrate also on what we need, not what, you know, something that someone else created. Okay, um, so all I'm saying is use rate guides as a guide, as a recommendation, as a place to start with what could possibly be out there. Okay, but going back to our model, if again we're charging $20 an hour and we're working three hours a day, five days a week, that's 15 hours. So that's 15 hours. 30 hours, so four four weeks, right, is uh, 60 hours. So 60 hours, so that's $1,200. So $1,200. So if we are, we need, so for our time, for 60 hours a month of work, we're charging, we want to make $1,200 plus we want to make $500 to pay for our costs, okay? So at this point, we're at $1,700, that we would like to make a month based on what we are currently doing. Again, I'm just using this number. This is how to figure it out. So if that's the case, then we look at, okay, well, how many voiceover jobs do I want to do a month? By the way, taking this approach, systematically going through the your business, right, and, and an overall umbrella, Right. And if we use that word systematically, that's the overall system that we're creating, that you're creating. You have to look at it from that or, or you, know, you look at it whatever way you want to. But in my opinion, if you look at it from that point of view, then everything from there trickles down so that the effect is felt all over your entire business. Meaning that if you know you need to make seventeen hundred dollars or you'd like to make seventeen hundred dollars in a month. Okay, then we look at, let's say that you're like, okay, well, I think that if I did 50 voiceovers a month, okay, if I did 50 voiceovers a month, and from those voiceovers, if I did 50, divide that by 1,700, I'm like getting into the math here. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, so 50. <laughs> I'm going to cheat and use a calculator so that I can do it quickly because now we're getting a little more. Okay, so 34. So thir- so it comes out to 34. Let me just double check, make sure. So uh, Yeah, so $34 per voiceover. So let me say that, $34 per voiceover, okay? 
That's to make $1,700 a month at 15 hours of work a week, okay, and to make $1,700 a month, we would need to do 50 voiceover jobs at $34. So when we're talking about charging, uh, now you could say, okay, well, Anthony, 50, that's a lot of voiceovers. I only do like, I'd be lucky if I did 10. Okay, well, if we did 10 voiceovers, all right, then we know that, I mean, right off the bat, 10 voiceovers, right, would be what, $170, Per voiceover, is that right? Uh, I believe so. 170, yeah, I, yeah, because that's right, of course. So, 170 dollars per voiceover if you did 10. Now, I want to point out as you look at this, you say, okay, great. Well, I want to do 10 voiceovers. I want to make 1,700 dollars a month, and I want to work 60 hours a week, three hours a day, five days a week. Uh, I've got these costs, so that means I'll net. $1,200, then I got to take and consider taxes. By the way, you might be thinking, boy, this is a lot. This is like, this is a business, <laughs> right? We're running a business. So we've got to think about all these things. So of course, as you dwindle away, like as you take things for expenses, for taxes, um, you know, for marketing, you know, we weren't talking about marketing at all. So you're talking about your costs are going to go up, which means you've got to make more. So as you do this, but let's just keep even like just to this this model we have now. So 10, 10 voiceovers at $170, right? A pop. Well, now that we've done that, you go out there and be like, bam, you got it. I'm gonna charge $170 for, you know, per voiceover. And I'm thinking that, you know, that should be a minute, that should be two, or you know what? I'll I'll even give stuff away. I'll do up to three minutes, $170. So you start putting yourself out there. You start trying to market, ask you know people. You start sending emails. You start signing up for websites. Okay, you start getting a little confused because people over here are charging this, people over there are charging this. It's a mess. You don't know where to go. But then you find out you do get a little bit of traction. People start to contact you. Then people are like, "Hey, I never pay one hundred and seventy dollars. Sorry, we can't work together." And you're like, "Okay, I understand, but you've got your rates, right? That's your business." Then that happens to you again. Then you're not getting any traction. Then a couple weeks go by, a month goes by, two months go by. You're not getting any work. You're auditioning for these jobs. Then you see a job that's posted for two thousand dollars. You're like, "Oh my gosh, this is this is great. I'm an audition for this job. This could solve this. I could make all this in one pop." Do you get the job? No, you don't get the job. So now you've done all this work, you've put all this effort in, and you realize, well, you know what? I can't even get one job at $170, or I can't even get one, okay? So then you have to think, okay, well, then maybe my pricing structure at this current moment where I sit as a new person or as a person who is trying to build a business with a brand, okay, meaning if you want to replace brand with reputation, go right ahead, because that's really what brand is, is a reputation, Okay, And you don't have a reputation if no one knows you. You've got nothing. So if you take that idea, then you're like, well, I don't really have a lot of reputation to fall back on. So maybe what I need to do is dial back a little bit using my prices as a marketing tool to give me um, reputation. If you ever had a family member or knew a friend or someone who started a business, okay, you know a good practice is giving away, you know, like for example, food. Uh, my grandfather, he had started um, many different businesses, and and while he was alive, and I remember, but the la- one of the businesses he started was a restaurant, and um, he gave away a lot of food at the start. You know what I mean? And I, you know, I I never thought about it because I really wasn't paying attention when I was younger. Um, but as I look back on it, you know, that built a reputation. That built a likable person. It built someone, uh, it built an idea that, hey, this is someone who gives more than they're interested in taking. I like to work with, let's be honest, we all of us want to work with people who give more than they take, right? That's what we want. We all hope that. We all hope the world would work that way, okay? All right? And so 
I'm not saying for us to give stuff away because, you know, in our society right now online, especially if you try to go give your services away, people think you're scamming. <laughs> that's how t- – I mean, let's be honest. That's how tough it's spot, right? I mean, you try to give something away, they'll be like, what are you trying to sell? Or what are you trying to do? Are you trying to scam me? So you can't even give stuff away now. But again, that's because also of your reputation. You might not even have one yet. So what I'm trying to say is is that maybe $170 per job – is not what you need to do. Maybe we need to look at doing more work, all right, at a little less of a rate. And I mentioned the difference between 10 jobs and 50 jobs uh, over 60 hours a month, okay? One is $170, one is $34. This is something I want to point out to you. This is the same amount of hours. The same amount of hours, You are charging a completely different rate, yet you are making the same amount of money. Someone could argue, well, Anthony, you don't know how long those 50 jobs are going to take opposed to the 10 jobs. That's true. And that is where you as a business owner have to manage that time and make those decisions. But the idea that I'm trying to point out to you is, is that when you go to these rates, and you're seeing all of these things that are being, you know, thrown at you or, you know, the the anger of a site over here or an idea over here. Take a step back and actually take an inventory of what you want to accomplish. Right? What you want to happen. Use that as the basis of your business. Okay? Does the market believe because of all these websites and all these rate guides that things should be charged a certain way? Yes. But you can find a way that matches your personal goals and needs within that structure. But you shouldn't be tied to it that you can't make your own decisions. They should be based off of your needs. In my mind, this is the ultimate way of how you should price your voiceover business. This is how voiceover should, in my again, this is all my opinion, but this is how I feel like it should work and honestly how a lot of other businesses work. Don't get me wrong. I am not saying that we should ignore the unions and the rate guides. I'm not saying that. In fact, they should be a part of our toolbox. But in the end, and and all of them, by the way, all of them disclaim, right? They all uh, have disclaimers that say this. It should not be what you go to the top of the mountain, take out your sword, and fall on. It should be a guide. That's, That's what they are. Just a guide. One guide, but it should not replace your specific personal needs. You, that's your job as a business owner to come up with it. And if people get angry with you because you can do what they do better, faster, and cheaper, well, that's like, that's business. That is business. That is not someone taking advantage of someone. That is business. If you make a product that's better, faster, cheaper, you will win every single time. That's the truth. We all know that. So again, I I wanted to take this opportunity, today's video, to hopefully maybe give you another path to figuring out your own voiceover rates and how you could possibly charge for voiceover work. And in my mind, it's one of the better ways to do it because it is all based on what you need. Not what somebody else that you've never met tells you you should need, but it's what you, your family needs. Okay. All right. So I will step off the box. <laughs> let's see. We got some comments coming in. Thank you guys for listening and watching. Uh, let's see. We've got a Facebook user. Hello. <laughs> uh, I don't know who you are because it's a Facebook user, but thank you for being here. Joseph from YouTube. Don, what's up? Good to have you. Flyer here. Eric, what's up? Uh, let's see. Hello, Anthony. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and experience. Thank you very much for watching. Frank says, hi, Anthony. How would you charge if you are playing a character in an online video game? You are the main character. 
character. And and Frank, this again is something that, you know, what this whole video was talking about. You know, you could go to a place like the, uh, you know, the GVAA rate guide or the Gravy for the Brain rate guide or even my rate guide on a VO's journey. And you can look at these guides and use them as guides, as recommendations. But in the end, you have got to do what you want to do. Here's a perfect example. Uh, two days ago, I had a client, you know, email me and they wanted to know they had uh, four different scripts and they uh, had their client wanted to get a price from me, how much it would charge. I specifically charge one rate. That's it. I charge one rate for a specific amount of word count and I charge one rate for buyouts, for promotional or broadcast rates, depending on how large it is, I charge that. That is all I charge. I don't care what it is that I do. I don't charge anything different. I have made that business decision. So all of those scripts and all of those, you know, which was each script was only like 100 words or 150 words or so. You know what I mean? So it came out to quite a few hundred dollars. They were fine with it. They paid it. But the point here is I'm trying to make to you is I charged the same rate I would have charged that person who works with me privately that I would have someone who works with me on Fiverr or someone who works with me somewhere else. The only time I ever differ or or differ from the rates that I have chosen for my business is if I'm on a website that charges their own rates, right, that I, I have no control over. Everything else, I have chosen a rate, okay? And that's what I charge. And I don't deviate from it until the time comes when there's a supply and demand issue, which another time is coming soon, that I've got to raise prices because I have so much work. There's too much supply. I mean, there's too much demand and not enough supply. That's how economics works, right? So that's what I'm, that's what I do. And I would recommend that you do the same. Now, other people in the industry will tell you something completely different. And and even in my rate guide, I show you different prices and price ranges for you to make that decision. Some people will say, listen, as a video game character, as a main character, you need to charge X, Y, Z for this amount of time. Okay, you know, you need to charge uh, per line. Okay, this, the, you know, a poor, or, you know, per, you know, and when it comes to video games, it's usually lines. Okay. You have to decide that. Okay. Cause I, I could throw out all kinds of rates, but again, it also comes down to do you want to price yourself out of the work? Do you see what I mean? It's really, it's up to you. You have to be okay with the price and then you got to get the work, right? So that's important too. So I would say that use the guides that we talked about, these different rate guides, but in the end, use your business and the needs that you have to price it. And I don't want you to think, and I want everybody to know this, and I thought this too, so it's fair enough to think this. There is plenty of work out there. There is. No matter how many voiceovers come into the the business, new voiceover people, no matter how many AI bots are out there, Don't succumb to this idea that there is not abundance. There's not work available. There is work available. And if there's more work available over here, go over there. If there's more work available over there, go over there. But do what you need to do for your business. I know that's cryptic to answer your your question, Frank, but it really is to me the best way to go about it. Uh, Storm, it's good to have you here. Uh, math is one of my <laughs> my great triggers. Sorry. Hello, Angela. Good to have you. Uh, let's see. Can you create a Discord server? I apologize. I'm not quite sure what you mean. <laughs> Zelby, so I apologize. Uh, explain more, please. Uh, let's see. Scott. Hi, Anthony. Quick question on Fiverr. I have an audiobook customer cancel my order after receiving the introduction of the novel was delivered for feedback. Uh, The client then stated that my voice wasn't right for the project. They have good they gave good feedback and the cancellation comments, but I'm wondering what the ramifications will be to my account. 
Scott, good uh, uh, good question. And when uh, we're talking about Fiverr and we're strictly talking about cancellations, it is a running percentage, right, of how many orders overall you've done uh, uh, compared to how many orders have canceled. And as long as it stays above, I will be honest with you, as that percentage goes down, right, because, you know, there's the percentages of orders delivered, which is the cancellation, there's uh, communication, there's the ratings, uh, I think there's four. I'm not sure what the other one is. But anyways, uh, off the top of my head, as it goes down, it will affect a little bit in the algorithm how high you are ranked. But it's not going to – I mean, mine are, not, mine are very – the only things on mine that stay at 100% all the time is the five-star rating for me. All my other ones fluctuate between 98 and 99 all the time on mine. Because I'm just doing so much, you're going to have turnover. There's some people who are not, you know, just going to be, not everyone is going to be happy with your work all the time. That's impossible. Okay. The best thing that you can do, though, is be polite and courteous and thank these people and wish them the best. Because just because someone doesn't work with you now, they might come back and work with you later. All right. That's the best thing to do. But I hope that helps answer your question. Uh, It does affect you as it goes down. But depending on how far down that percentage goes, that's the real key. If it goes down one or two percentage points, it's not that big of a deal. It's not going to hurt you that bad. Uh, Okay. Uh, Any advice? Welcome. Oh, thank, thank you, Scott. Mark says, absolutely. Good point, Anthony. That's business. Thank you, sir. Facebook uses great stuff. Awesome. Out of work, Professor. Professor, hi, Anthony. For a brand new VA on Fiverr who has no reviews and therefore no reputation, what would your advice be for starting rate gig to get that first order? Uh, I feel like since I'm starting out, I should probably go very, very low, maybe include full broadcast rights, commercial rights, in order to be able to get that first business to get some reputation capital. All right, listen, I... Personally, I uh, right off the bat, I like the way you are thinking, all right, uh, in general about understanding how we have to gain a reputation. We've got to build something. You know, when I talked about last week about uh, pricing on Fiverr, and I was talking about um, also the um, SAG After Union and a lot of other people talking about how we as newcomers to the voiceover industry are often put in a big rock and a hard place because we are told that we can't do this, but if you but we can't do that because we're not good enough to do this. So the only thing we can do is pay someone to get good enough to do that, right? It doesn't seem like it, that's a good model for for us. So um, my recommendation to you, first and foremost, is always follow your gut. Follow your gut. If you want to start off and you want to charge. whatever you want to charge, you start off doing what you need to do to get started. And then as you go along with the idea that this is not where my rate is going to stay, okay, uh, this is where it's going to go. By the way, if if any of you have studied small business or growing a business or building a business, you know there's that old adage, right, that says for the first five years, you don't take any money from the business. You know, the business is not supposed to make a profit. There's a lot of times businesses don't make profits for years because the business is not profitable. But I think as voiceover artists and as solopreneurs and us working from homes, I think we come into it and we hear people saying that's not really – we should make money right off the bat. And that's not business. That's not how it works, right? You've got to put a lot into something. You've got to grow something just like – you know, I'm getting philosophical here, but just like growing a, 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 a garden, okay, when you plant the seeds – you know, and you, you fertilize it and you water it. You got to give all of this stuff to that garden, to those seeds to grow it. And then after you've given, 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 then you reap the benefits of it. Right. Sounding very biblical, but it's true. Right. Same thing with this. You might have to give. And in this instance, maybe giving is starting out at five dollars or ten dollars. You see what I mean? That's your giving. And then as you give, 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 it will start to grow. Your business will start to grow, meaning you will be able to grow your rates as well. But I I think starting out where you want to start out is a great thing. And if you feel that you need to start out there, more power to you. Go for it. 
Okay? Just know that the idea here is to give, 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 and you will reap the benefits later. But you got to give first before you can get. That's the that's true. If you want to get a smile from someone, smile at them. If you want to get a punch from someone, punch them first. <laughs> right? I mean, that's the way of the universe. You've got to give to get. Every action, there is an equal uh, or what is it? Equal reaction. It's the truth. All right. It is the truth. Good question. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Mark says, hey, Mark. Hello, Famicom. Mike, what's up? I didn't get a notification that you were live. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of that. I don't know if that's just something where YouTube only sends out a few notifications to only a few people. I don't know what percentage they send out, but I know it's very few, I think, which is really sad because the whole notification bell. Now, what you can do, by the way, oh, thank you for this. And now I want to tell you, everybody, if you go into your settings, okay, uh, on your YouTube account, there is an option to actually uh, put that I want to be notified every time this person uh, puts out something. I think you can do that. So that way you actually will get a notification no matter what. As of right now, I think it's like a very small percentage. Sometimes I think it's less than 1% of the people who actually follow you get a, a notification that you go live. So that way, though, if you want to actually get every time, go into your settings and click that button. I can't be more like descriptive because I know it exists, but I don't know exactly where it is. But that's a way to at least get a notification every time. Uh, let's see. Uh, Greg, what's up, my man? Facebook user. For an absolute newbie, would you recommend starting with Fiverr or ACX? ACX. Absolutely ACX. The reason why is because uh, ACX requires very little from you, meaning like you don't have to have a polished demo. You don't have to have some incredible credentials. You don't have to have amazing pictures. You don't have to have amazing copywriting skills. What you do have to have is a thirst to audition, and there's lots of work. And if you're not stingy about the work, you, again, we go back to what are you trying to accomplish? You know, are you trying to build a business where you're giving and giving and giving and you will get later? Okay, ACX is incredible. It's where I started. I did books for years. I mean, book after book after book after book. I was doing, you know, five to ten books a week. That's how crazy it was. Now, that transitioned over doing books on Fiverr. Okay, which again is a great transition for you. So if you start on ACX, then you come over to Fiverr and you offer book services, which then you have a reason to be able to offer your services because you have experience. And I also, listen, when I first started, I never thought I'd do commercials. Now all I do is pretty much commercial work. But when I first started, I was never going to do commercials. I was like, that's not me. I don't even know. That demo thing, that's too much. <laughs> that's what I thought. I'll just be happy doing audiobooks. But as I did more and more audiobooks, I just got better at presenting. Does that make sense? Uh, disc, uh, let's see. Oh, somebody's talking about the Discord. Um, thanks so much for all the great advice. Thank you. Uh, Greg says, Discord is the future. All the cool kids are doing it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Scott says, thank you for the feedback, amigo. I will keep completing jobs and ramble on. Mark says, I recently had an issue with the cancellation on Fiverr in order, recording a message I could not do on moral grounds. Now my completion rate went down. Any advice on voiding this in the future? Um, I have two comments. One, Mark, you can always put a uh, uh, in your description and your FAQs a disclaimer that says, "Hey, please, you know, I do not do uh, these types of of uh, voiceover work. I don't do this type of voiceover work." But second, I've had to do the same thing. Uh, I've had to do same thing. I I think I talked about it a week or two, maybe two weeks ago, where you know somebody was was wanting me to do a voiceover, and for moral reasons, I was like, "No, I'm sorry, I, I'm not going to do that." Okay, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I don't believe in what you. I don't believe in what you're saying. I'm not going to do it, uh, whether they were using me for an example or not. But then I had a book a year or so ago that was like a, it was like a I was it was like a three three four thousand dollar book deal, and it was a religious book. And I don't have any problem doing religious work, uh, but you know when 
I dove into the book, the book was was more about uh, like the devil and how the devil was was good. Uh, so that was not my, you know. And, and I'm not listen. I'm I'm not uh, spouting my personal beliefs to anybody. But I'm personally morally that wasn't my stance. I don't believe in that. And so you know that was not something that I felt confident doing. So I had to cancel it myself. They were very angry. I did not know, which by the way, what it does show you, maybe to answer your question, is that you can put things into place. Like I need to see the work first. Now on Fiverr, they can order something from you, but that's why it's important for you to put the disclaimer where you are, right? That you don't do X amount, you know, you don't do this work. So they are known. For the most part, I see a lot of people do contact me because a lot of people know it's not appropriate material or that people might have problems doing it. So most of the time people contact me now. Do you know what I mean? But in the off chance, but in that book deal I was telling you about, I didn't at the time, I was just so excited. I was just getting work that I wasn't thinking about, you know, well, what does the book, you know, cause they told me the book was a religious nature. I was like, okay, that's fine. I didn't know it was that. And I should have asked for the manuscript to check it out first. Right. So now I ask up front, before I do any of that. That's important. That could be something that you do to help you not fall into that trap again. Uh, let's see. That's new good advice uh, for solopreneurs like us. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Facebook users. So when you increase your prices, do you actually contact your customers to let them know about the increase or do you keep the old rates for them? Great question. I do uh, I do both. There's some uh, people that I've been doing business for so long that both of us have agreed upon it because they continue to come back to me over and over and over and over and over again that I charge them the same rates, okay? Uh, and they just give me the same type of work over and over again, and I'm okay with that. But for the most part, when I change the prices, I change it across the board for everybody. But if I have a client that's you know using me, has been using me, continues to use me, and, you know, we'll discuss the price range. And if they tell me, hey, listen, I respect what you're doing, but I can't actually pay that, then you have to make a decision whether you're going to continue to work with them or not. I usually try to continue to work with them because usually the the range of difference is not as much as you would think, you know. Uh, by the way, when you raise prices, and we're talking about Fiverr, just raise them in $5 increments. Don't go from like $10 to $50. That's just, just you're going to price off anybody who has ever worked with you at the start, you know what I mean? Just go up in $15 inc- or $5 increments. It helps. Um, let's see. Fa- uh, Angela, no punching Anthony. <laughs> okay. I used to get notifications, but now I know to just go find you at this time. <laughs> I got you. Uh, Jeff says, should we start an LLC or another type of business for VO? Just operate our business as just person, not a company. Uh, great question, Jeff. I personally have an LLC. Okay. And I, I um, have created, you know, I've had an LLC before. You are automatically you will automatically, once you start working, whether you create an LLC or not, you will automatically be considered a sole proprietor, okay, based off of your social security number. If you, so you will be taxed as such, okay, and it is the highest tax rate. Now, as an LLC, a single member LLC, it is taxed pretty much just like a um, just like a, a sole proprietor. Okay. But the idea is there's a couple other options with it, right? Like for example, you have the, uh, uh, you have a, a TIN number. Okay. Which means you've created a separate entity. And since you created a separate entity in that LLC, you then begin to shift liability. Okay. Other businesses more so than others, this matters a lot more, but if someone were to sue you, for example, and you know what I mean? They win the suit and you have to pay them or whatever. Whatever is held underneath the LLC, okay, will be then liable to them. So in this case, it could be your microphone, could be your whisper room, your computer. But you as a sole proprietor, if you are sued, 
everything you own, your house, your cars, whatever, could be held uh, and, you know, can be taken as used to pay off that suit. That's one reason why it's a great idea to create a corporation, an LLC, even as a single member LLC. And as you go along, having an LLC also allows you to shift over to different types of corporate um, corporate structures for tax purposes as you make more money. Okay, but just starting out, there's really no reason I think until you start making over twenty grand. In my personal opinion, until you start making over twenty grand a, a year, there's no reason to really get an LLC. But you know, it's if you plan on doing that, it's not a bad thing because you got to go through and get your name. You got to go through your state commission uh, office. You got to get your TIN number. You got to you know also apply for your doing business as your DBA name with your local government. You know your local treasurer's office. So there's a lot of things to do, but it's important. It's important to have your business license. Like I, I know you can't see it, but like I have my business license to operate in my home here, which by the way allows me to write off tax purposes my home as well, like different things in my home because I have cleared with my uh, my city and my county that this space in my home, all right, is used for business purposes in the city I live in. So there's different reasons you do tax purposes. And like I said, for the liability purposes to be an LLC, but you don't have to. And quite honestly, doing it up front because it costs some money uh, is not, you know, uh, the most important thing. So, you know, but when you start making that, it's a good idea too. I hope that helps. Uh, let's see. Thanks for com- uh, confirming the ACX first strategy. Looking forward to Fiverr, but having fun with ACX. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Famicom Mike content creators are now advertising voiceover jobs on TikTok, but I hear TikTok is Chinese spyware. Uh, I've heard similar things too. And, you know, I think in the end, as always, it is a platform that, you know, you have to choose whether you use or not. And if, you know, if we live in fear of what's happening, I know we'll never move forward. That's not saying we should ignore it. Okay, and it's not saying that if people are breaking the law or doing something wrong, they shouldn't be held accountable. But we should also move forward. And with TikTok, I think that it's hard to deny the amount of um, presence people or awareness people are getting on that platform. And also something that you can always do, too, is you can always go into your phone. There's specific settings like push notifications, things on your phone that you can turn off for TikTok. And I recommend you doing that, right? You don't need to have all those extra things checked on so that anyone who could possibly do that could follow you or, I mean, could take advantage of you. Does that make sense? So that's, a, I mean, listen, that's a great question. It's something to, our, our privacy is, is more important now than ever. I mean, being able to secure it because we, I literally do all my work online. Now I I am starting to put pl- things into place because I get I get you know like my personal accounts things are getting hacked once or twice three times a year. It is becoming inevitable. So the question is are you prepared? Are you thinking about it? Are you taking steps to be ready to take care of it when it happens? It's not if it will happen, it's just when. Okay? It's just the, the price we pay of doing work online. I hate to say that, but it's true, right? Um, okay. Let's see. Hello. Looking forward to the five release session on Saturday. Absolutely. Oscar. It's great to have you in the group. Robert says, love your advice. Thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robert. Uh, let's see flyer here. Eric says, well, that is an interesting question. What kind of insurance does your LLC carry? So there you go. That's another thing too, as a business, right? You do have, uh, insurance companies can do things like Anthem. All right. Anthem health insurance. I love Anthem. Uh, We all have different ones, so it's up to you. Uh, And your spouse might have insurance, too, that you fall under that when you're just starting out. But if you are the one who's holding the insurance, that is another thing. By the way, that's another cost that you really have to take in consideration is an insurance cost. Okay, That's a big thing. And there is small business insurance and all this stuff out there. But this is real cost of running a business. Okay, especially if you want to leave your job and you're the sole like provider like of insurance in your family, you got to really consider that. Um, let's see. Uh, Facebook user, yep. Jeff says, "Awesome info. You read my mind. Do people get sued in the VO industry on our level?" Uh, I don't want to take the chance. Right? It's like that idea of you know, do you want to fix your roof 
when there's a leak or do you want to fix your roof before there's a leak so a leak doesn't happen? I mean, that's that's kind of like that's like the name of the game, right? Uh, you know, do you do something only when it happens and it's, it, you know, and then you're you're scrambling and you all, you inevitably get screwed multiple ways or do you take the initiative and take care of it first before it happens to you? OK, uh, on the easier note to answer your question, I don't see a lot of people getting sued, but I can tell you that you're only one, you know, you're only one lawsuit away. Right. So that's how I believe that's what I believe in. And it's just my opinion. That's a great question, though. Uh, let's see. Mark says, hello, Robert, jo- Joseph Moreau. You're looking to get into this too. Okay, so let me talk. <laughs> Did you get additional insurance with your home insurance to cover your VO equipment? Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, Robert, hello, Mark. Yes, and this guy, Anthony Peak is great. <laughs> Thank you. Eric says, I meant liability insurance, not health to protect your LLC. Eric, smart. And uh, a lot of businesses will actually do that. Like, for example, I think what Eric's talking about is, you know, there is insurance that you can get for your business, liability insurance. Like if someone's walking up your driveway or your um, your um, uh, uh, walkway and it's icy and they slip and fall, they technically can sue you, right? Because it's your business grounds. Now, my particular business, all right, I don't uh, have people visiting my house. I mean, like I don't have people visiting my studio. I do all my work online. So I do not have that insurance, but I know exactly what what you're talking about, Eric. And if you plan on having that type of business, it's not a bad idea to add the extra liability insurance to whatever insurance you have. Okay, and that's kind of what he's talking about. Uh, um, So that's important. I was talking more about liability of copyright infringement and things of that nature. But he's talking about, like, I think you're talking about physical liability, which is important as well. Uh, Let's see. Talk tie today. I just got here. What? I can be sued for doing voiceover. (laughs) Oh, no, Ty. You found you. Yes, you found out you can be sued. Um, Let's see. Mark says, I actually found ACX harder to get started with than Fiverr. I had work. With a client was fine with, not meeting their standards. I think I figured it out, but never happened on Fiverr. Cool. Hey, listen, that's that's wonderful, Mark. And and then rock Fiverr, man. Go for it. Uh, what about errors and omissions insurance? Uh, boy, there's a lot of insurance out there. <laughs> there's a lot. You you could you know you could get insurance on anything. And again, this is something that you should take in consideration. I do not have errors and omissions insurance, but I will definitely look this up after we're done. <laughs> uh, Anthony, if my conversation with Robert Joseph Moreau was confusing to you, then FYI, we both taught at the same high school. Cool. Had no idea I'd see him here. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right, you guys, listen, thank you so much. Boy, this was a long session today. I hope this has been helpful. I hope people can use this method of you know pricing right if you're just coming in the first part of the video is all about how to price your voiceover work okay and a method of taking all of the information out there to coming up with a price that works for your business again if you get a chance please like subscribe hit that notification button and go into your settings and hit the um, the, the 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 hit the button that allows for every time I go live or every time I post something for you to get notified because currently even if you hit the notification button you don't get notified all the time it's only a small percentage so you got to take that one extra step but thank you guys so much I appreciate it you have a wonderful wonderful day I will be back tomorrow for five or Friday So make sure you come with any of your questions regarding Fiverr and I will see you then. Thank you guys so much. Goodbye. Goodbye.